I can't speak Hawaiian, no. so I no, can't interpret I for that's, you. That's Merry Christmas in Hawaiian. <laughs> I'm here at Arvo with Dr. Tom Aller. Dr. Tom Aller is a clinician scientist. He's from San Francisco in California. And he was one of the first, perhaps the first, we were just talking about to publish on bifocal soft lens myopia control. We were just talking about that and he said he had a poster back in 2000 and published a twin study in 2006. So there's a little bit of noise in the background as they're launching the future Arvo, which is going to be in Hawaii next year. So I'm quite keen to go to that. Do you think you'll be Hawaii? for an sure. to go to Hawaii? Yeah. Yes, that way I can wear my Hawaiian Arvo oh, shirts and not have, look out of place. Yes, he does have a, a variety of Hawaiian shirts, so you'll fit right in. Yeah. So what I wanted to talk to you about today, Tom, is just from the clinician point of view, you do a lot of research in practice and, and that's a unique situation to be in, to be able to understand what's actually happening um, for our patients. And we were talking a little bit about the different types of multifocal lenses available and what might be the perfect myopia controlling contact lens. So what do you think the perfect myopia controlling contact lens would do? Oh, the perfect myopia controlling contact lens would be one that's uh, relatively easy for a child to wear so you can't get really bizarre with the optical profiles and have it acceptable but most commercially available presbyopic lenses are very well tolerated by kids so uh, it's likely that the signal is increased uh, when you increase the ad power uh, although it's not uh, quite proven mm. and it's likely that the um, myopic control effect is improved either the larger the area that you can influence or the closer you can bring the plus to the center. Mm. And uh, Maria Liu has done some work on uh, the effect of near center versus distant center uh, in animals and uh, so I think the most plus you can get and the closer you can get to the center but we still don't actually know. Mm. So Tom's an, an advocate of saying, well, it's something that the, the late, great Professor Brian Holden had said, any plus anywhere with some extra words entered in there for expletives in his particular style. And this is an interesting topic, I think, because we have loads of daily disposable lenses available for presbyopes with near centres, but we're concerned, I guess, about doing the opposite to what we should be doing with the distant centre if, in fact, that is the correct profile. Yeah. And we had a poster uh, a couple of days ago from the Brian Holden Vision Institute using a lens that had a tiny little spot of plus power in the centre. So it was near centred over a tiny little spot and then sort of the traditional distant centre design. Yeah. So what do you think is the mechanism there by which we could stick plus anywhere and that might have an effect for myopia control? Yeah, so the any damn plus, any damn place was, uh, um, uh, uh, I guess I was anointed uh, with that title mm. by Brian. He didn't quite buy it, I guess. He just, ah, yeah, any damn plus, any damn place, that's what you think? So anyway, I think that is the case. And uh, obviously I convinced them because they ended up putting a little plus in the center. Um, so I've used all kinds of lenses uh, for 25 years. They have been near center, they've been distant center, they've been diffractive, they've been hard lenses, soft lenses, hybrid lenses. And uh, to me, they always seem to work. Uh, I've looked at uh, some of my presentations I've gone through and just did a simple uh, look at, let's say, 30 cases of near center, recent cases, and uh, in one little quick analysis I did, I found better outcomes. Not statistically significant, but they were a smaller uh, rate of progression in those cases. So I'm working on a six-year retrospective right now. It's essentially going to be a look at every child that came into the practice for myopia control. And we look at their previous uh, rate of progression with whatever they were wearing. And they could wear single vision glasses, contacts, uh, progressive multifocals. Uh, uh, they could be on atropine. It's a whole mix. And we put them into bifocal contacts, orthokeratology, with or without atropine or with bifocal glasses. We're going to look at what kind of uh, progression rates we see uh, with that. And within that group, which I'll be presenting uh, next month in um, Scotland, uh, I have a near center versus distant center carve out, a fairly large number of patients. And uh, there was no difference in the, um, in the rates, the myopia rates with each of those lenses. So, um, People should keep in mind that uh, we all we all love and respect Earl Smith and of course Brian, um, and uh, they never said really that it has to be peripheral hyperopic defocus. Mm. They said 
look what we can do by mm. putting the medicine out in the periphery and still preserving excellent vision Pretty in the cutie. center. I mean, that was the concept. Mm. So compared to a multifocal contact, which if you put in a lab or you put on adults, you put on presbyopes and you measure low contrast, visual acuity, you measure all these things, you can see that it's it's a it's a defective optical system in a way. There's there's coma, there's aberrations. You do ortho K, if you look at it you know, critically in a lab, there's all kinds of aberrations there. But um, people love them, they do well with them. Kids don't care at all. And that's that's something I always would say, just based on my experience, they really don't care. There's a neuronal adaptation. If you don't ask them a lot of probing questions when you first put it on, because a lot of practitioners, when they first use it, they're kind of scared. Are you okay? Yeah, are you all you're right? Is right? It, you know, am I going to damage your Straight psyche awesome. yeah, or whatever? And uh, oh my God, what am I going to do to these kids? And I mean, even one way to look at it, and I've made this argument as well, is you have these kids that are continually progressing. They're headed toward all these potential complications in the future. And you know, what's What's the, uh, what's the risk of those things happening in the future round? Detachment, glaucoma, cataract, we know those risks are high, uh, even with low myopia, and you can go into to some of the Ian Flitcroft mm. stuff. But... I just talked to Ian Flitcroft earlier, and it yeah. was an extreme fan moment for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you get Favorite a selfie? Paper. I was, oh, I should have. Did you give him a little uh, hug? Regrets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah, Ian's a great guy. Hey, Ian. Um, <laughs> So um, all these things are happening, and these are terrible consequences. And we have a we have an ability to do something very simple, even if you control myopia by 50 percent, which uh, even an ophthalmologist can do. Are there any ophthalmologists out there? Maybe. No, no uh, disrespect <laughs> intended. But uh, very simple to control myopia by 50 percent. And uh, uh, Noel Brennan made the point that if you control it by 33 percent, which even Johnson Johnson can do um, with their lens. Um, you can reduce the rate of, uh, or the, the incidence of uh, high myopia by, what, 70%? 70%. And then Brian said, uh, well, if you do 50%, you can virtually eliminate yeah. minus six myopes. So imagine what we could do with a very simple lens, kids love, soft lens is easy to fit, you don't have to do ortho -K. ortho -K is great, don't get upset, you know, but it's it's only done by 5% of the practitioners, so that's never going to be 100% It's not the lens for the masses, despite my obvious desperate love for ortho -K, it isn't the lens for the masses, a soft lens yeah. is going to be the I mean, yeah, I, I do a lot of ortho -K. I was originally ortho -K patient, that's what got me interested in, in optometry, so um, I love ortho -K. but in um, any case... Uh, Small technical hitch, but we're back. And um, so the, the first question about seven and a half minutes ago is, what's the ideal myopia controlling contact lens? <laughs> yeah, so we were just talking about ortho-K, uh, but soft lenses uh, are going to be the way that uh, the vast majority of patients are going to get these types mm -hmm. of treatments. And a lot of practitioners and a lot of companies, mm -hmm. uh, rightly so, are concerned about the safety of contact lenses in a lot of kids. Uh, it's a little bit misplaced because if you look at how compliant children are, they're much more compliant than teenagers, for instance. So if yeah. anything, contact should be legal for six-year-olds and illegal for 16-year-olds and <laughs> illegal for 20-year-old males. And then later, when they get a little bit more mature, like 30 40. or 40 maybe, yeah. <laughs> then males could start wearing contacts again. So, I mean, if the FDA wants to stick their nose into contact lenses, they could make them illegal for uh, irresponsible males, yeah. uh, but great for kids. So. Oh, but in any case, a lot of practitioners will want to use daily disposable contact lenses. Um, it's demonstrably the safest form of contact lenses. Um, uh, there's really no doubt about that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but not, I use a lot of monthlies and quarterlies because custom lenses and kids do fine with that. But the ideal contact would be a daily disposable in most yeah. people's mind. And so then practitioners are wondering, well, we can't use daily disposable contact lenses because they're near center, most of them. And uh, so they're just going to wait until somebody comes out with a, a distant center. There is one, but it may not be available in your area. Yeah. But when I've looked at my patients over the years, like I say, for many, many years, use all kinds of contact lenses. I used them a long, long time ago, long before I ever heard about Earl Smith um, and uh, about peripheral hyperopic defocus. So uh, I just don't think that that's the only way that you can control myopia. So near center lenses, I've never been hesitant to use them. And when I've looked at it, uh, I've looked at it recently because I'm putting together a retrospective case series of six years of myopia control. And in my first look at that data, um, near center lenses versus distant center lenses, absolutely no difference between them. So 
I'll, I'll be presenting that uh, hopefully soon, maybe get a paper out. We're going to try to do a near center versus distant center yeah, randomized control study. And um, uh, it should be helpful uh, just because it will give practitioners uh, free reign to use whatever's available out there. Mm -hmm. And if they prefer to use daily disposables and they can't get um, uh, the, some of these new lenses or one new lens that's a daily disposable distant center, uh, they can f feel free, Got based on the evidence, to use uh, yeah. you know, near center lenses. So Tom's a fantastic example about how what we do in clinical practice can really then lead what happens academically, what's researched academically, and ultimately what's developed. So, um, so it's fantastic to have had this chat with Tom and for us to get an idea about the things that we might be looking at in future and the, the things that, that we can determine through doing the best for our patients in clinical practice. So thanks so much for your time, Tom. Okay. It's been really good. Thanks very much. All See right. you later. Good day.